welcome to Pickleball Nation. Welcome back, Pickleballers, to another Pickleball Nation where we're here to give you news, information, and tips on the game of pickleball. I'm Reggie Staggers, and I'm joined in the studio with my co-host, Sherry. And don't say it's a wonderful day or it's a phenomenal day because we've used those words already. <laughs> so what kind of day is it, Sherry? It, 80 degrees outside, it is a gorgeous day. Okay, I, I like that much better. All right. All right, so, you know, Sherry, these pondering things, man, have been working. You know, I hear a lot of people are talking about that they've learned so much from from your tutelage. So uh, uh, what is on this next pondering that we're going to do? So today I want you to ponder your paddle position. Uh, a lot of times people talk about ready stance and having that paddle up and ready. And that is correct at the non-volley zone. But when you're in different places on the court, you don't need your paddle this high. When you're at the baseline, your paddle should be lower. When you're at the transition area, you're starting to move your paddle up a little higher. So let's go to the video and check out this pondering. Okay, so we'll be back in a second. See you. Welcome to an episode of Pondering Pickleball with your host, Sherry Sternberg. So, today we're looking at your paddle readiness when you're on different locations on the court. When you're back here at the baseline, there's no reason to hold your paddle all the way up here because any ball that's up here is out. So keep it low, and you can see if the ball's in or out, and then if it's in, you're going to strike it with your backhand or your forehand and start moving forward. As you move forward on the court, your paddle starts to get a little bit higher, so you're ready and catching these balls in the air up here in the transition area, and your grip starts to loosen from maybe a 9 back here to an 8, 7, 6, the paddle's rising, 5, 4, and we get maybe up here to the 9 volley zone, our paddle's high under our chin, ready for the ball, and our grip is a lighter grip, a three, so you control that ball. Tight grip where you're showing veins popping, no, 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 not up here. Keep it light, keep it ready at the non-volley zone. Thank you for watching. Hey, Sherry, that was great. You know, I really learned a lot about you know, holding the paddle and how to work it up and get to that transition zone. Uh, what do you think? Well, I'm going to be watching. That's okay. what I think. I'm going to be watching to see. Um, a lot of people have said that they like the ponderings and um, they're helpful. And then I'm watching them and they're not implementing. So okay. you got to implement. Right. Absolutely. To make a difference. Okay, so uh, I think we have a new guest that is on the podcast who I think we're going to flip over, right? Absolutely. And and not only are you going to flip for him figuratively, but he literally flips. Okay. Uh, and who uh, would this guest Our be? today's guest is Duke Nelligan. Okay. And um, we're looking forward to asking him some questions. All right. So we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, our interview with Duke Nelligan. See you in a second. Pickleball Plus is your one-stop shop for all things pickleball. From the latest paddles, bags, clothing, shoes, nets, and the latest pickleball machine, Slinger. Pickleball Plus is your one-stop shop for all things pickleball. Calling all pickleballers, calling all pickleballers. Now the tournament season is upon us, we at Pickleball Nation want to acknowledge your accomplishments. So if you participated in a tournament and medal, Send us your picture, and we will display it during our podcast as part of our shout-out to Weekend Warriors. So email your picture to apickleballnation at gmail.com. Welcome back, Pickleballers. And we have with us in the studio Duke Nelligan. I'm Reggie Staggers, and I'm joined with my partner, Sherry Sternberg. And we're going to ask Duke a few questions. So, Duke, Coach Duke, You've been coaching for many years in, in uh, several different sports, but we know you have a, um, a main sport. Tell us about your coaching career. Well, I've been coaching gymnastics since 1971. Um, after graduating from college, I went into the teaching world and was coaching and teaching at Weymouth South High School. I did that for maybe two or three years, permanent subbing, 
getting my coaching credentials together, and then moved on to Maryland, where I was coaching at Marva Teens in Rockville, Maryland. So Duke, uh, how did you get involved in gymnastics? Why, why, why gymnastics of all sports? Well, just outside of Boston, Braintree, Mass., we had a number of student teachers from Springfield College. At the time, Springfield College was the uh, physical education college on the East Coast. And they brought to us a number of different sports and expertise. And it was a sport that I seemed to fit because I was small, uh, energetic, and fairly strong. And in junior high school, I got a chance to compete. By the time I finished with ninth grade, I was recruited by the high school team. They wanted me to either wrestle or do gymnastics. And wrestling just didn't appeal to me at the time, rolling around on the mat, getting dirty, sweating a lot. <laughs> and uh, so I, I took to gymnastics. By the end of my sophomore year, I was on varsity. And from that point, it just stuck with me. So how did the coaching career in gymnastics start? Well, being around good coaches was really the, the start of it all. Uh, my coaches in high school were very, very good. They knew how to bring you along. It was in the infancy of the sport, actually, but they were giving us uh, tutorials that made sense. And from that point, what you did was you understudied with a great coach. When I moved from Weymouth South High School to Marvatines in Rockville, I was working with one of the premier coaches in the country. And Dick Zuber at the time was somebody that everybody was following around because he seemed to be the guru for our sport. From there, I met Gary Anderson, who took over after him, and really was the gentleman that made me understand how important it was to sell the sport to, to kids. Not just yell at them, not just pick at them, but find a way to get them to understand they needed to make change. And um, in your coaching, has it taken you anywhere, or do you coach locally? Do you travel? Did you travel? Well, while I was at the University of Maryland, I got a chance to travel all over the country. Uh, not only that, we competed in Hawaii and the Bahamas. And when I retired in uh, 2009, I was still in the gym. My son had taken over for me. And I was spotting because he was on the road recruiting. And I finally got to a point where I'm, I'm not getting paid. I'm still getting beat up spotting in the gym. And I got a call from Bermuda. And they were asking if I knew anybody that would be interested in coaching their national team. So I flew out to Bermuda. I had been there before. I had coached a Bermudian knew what their facilities were like, knew what their culture was like, and thought it would be a great opportunity. My wife said, definitely not. <laughs> we were expecting grandkids. Mm. My son wasn't married yet. My daughter wasn't married yet. And I said, you know, this would be a great opportunity. So we signed on for Bermuda. And from, oh, 2009 to 2015, I had an opportunity to compete in London at World Championships. I was in youth games with my athletes in Brazil, Pan Am Games in Toronto, uh, Indusman, a small island off the coast of Scotland. I had a great opportunity to really see the world as an ambassador for gymnastics. I finished up in Gotland, Sweden, where I helped them get ready for an international event. And, and gymnastics wasn't the only sport you coach, right? No, no. Uh, when I graduated from college, 
My expertise was in track and field and gymnastics, but I was a K through 12 teacher. When I took my first job at the master's school in Dobbs Ferry, New York, I taught field hockey, lacrosse, softball, um, ballroom dancing, fencing, <laughs> you name it, I had to teach it. So tell us a little bit about your transition. Uh, we know you coach pickleball as well. Tell us about your transition into playing and then coaching pickleball. Well, I was the last to leave the island. My wife came back because my son and daughter-in-law were expecting our first grandchild. And when I got home, my wife, Chris, had said, you've got to come and try this. And I went, what are you talking about? And she goes, there's this new game out. Uh, I think it's, I think it might be pickle something. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay, what, how do they do it? And she goes, you just have to come. You have to see it. And I was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I'm not going to any senior center. I, I've just got through coaching internationally. Um, I'm a big wig now. I'm going to go back in the gym and coach gymnastics, you know, part time. And she says, no, no, you've got to try this. Trust me. So I went into the local uh, senior center and was hooked the first day I played. Wow. Wayne Cumberland, Patty Orenstein, Bruce Orenstein, Sydney. Uh, they, they were just great. And Lee, who was the original ambassador, said, oh, you've got to stay with this. You've got to stay with this. And before I knew it, I was hooked oh, okay. and couldn't get out. That would be Lee Richardson, correct? Yeah. <laughs> so hooked on pickleball, then you went from just playing to playing in tournaments. Tell us a little bit about that transition. Well, the, the transition was kind of odd because I was having some health issues and coaching in Virginia was one of my avenues to stay positive, to have a meaningful day, to start every day with, I've got to get ready to, to go coach. And as I was telling my students, you really have to try tournaments. You have, they're, they're so much fun. So... They're saying, well, what tournaments were you in? Well, I hadn't been in anything <laughs> yet. So I signed up for one here in Bowie, and I played another one with my wife. And the more I got into it, the, the more I realized that this is not your backyard badminton game. <laughs> this, is, this is for real. Right. And the more I got into it, the more I bought new shoes, multiple rackets, and it ended up where my partner and I, Haywood Corley, we played in the Senior Olympics down in Florida. Wow. So you also coach the game of pickleball, correct? Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, Sherry and I, we took a course here with a former gymnast, um, and we're certified as a beginner coach. And he really stressed you know, the, the basics. Um, tried to tell us, don't watch me. You have to learn the basics first. So we went through that whole course. And from that point, teaching really has been my, my passion. And the way I approach coaching is I'm a teacher slash coach. Teacher first in that you really have to know your basic mechanics. You have to know your rules. You have to be able to assess bodies and movements. And from there, you start to take your eye from gymnastics and apply the, uh, the angles, the physical attributes that somebody brings to the game. And then you go from there. And you also uh, were helping with some disabled people. I I, I think I uh, saw something about that. Yeah. Um, it, I got a call from Riderwood, and they were just starting out with 
wheelchair pickleball. Hmm. And I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know how uh, challenged they were at the at that point. So when I went in and saw them, I, would, I scratched my head because <laughs> they really weren't mobile. Mm -hmm. They had great uh, drive to try to hit that ball. They were falling out of their chairs. Oh. We had to take and strap them in because they would lean over so far <laughs> that they were almost falling on their faces. Wow. So what I did was I invited a bunch of what we called um, feeders. So we got... Brand new people, six or seven on each side. We had four wheelchair people. And the wheelchair people would bang the ball on their paddle and hit it. And if it didn't go to another wheelchair, the feeder would keep the ball in play. The wheel, we called them wheelies. They would chase the ball around if they were mobile and get their paddle on it. The feeders would jump in and keep the ball in play. And what it was doing was forcing the wheelchair people to track the ball. Okay. So. Oh, well, uh, that's some very interesting information. And uh, Duke, as a coach, awesome. Mm -hmm. I do have one final question. We all call you Duke, but your real name is Robert. I'd like the background on how you got to be called Duke. Okay. The short version. Yes. I was coaching in Massachusetts. Uh, it was part of the Weymouth South. I was doing my student teaching there. I graduated from that to coaching their boys team. I was also coaching at a private gym club in Weymouth. And I was fighting with my then girlfriend, who is now my wife, and I asked her very carefully if it was worth me staying in the area. And at that point, she said she couldn't commit. And I got on a plane and flew <laughs> to Maryland to work for Marvatines. A friend of mine who was a teammate in college had recruited me to come down here. And I said, you know what? I don't have anything else on the board. I'll come down and coach down here. So after a night on the town in Massachusetts, I arrived in Maryland. I walked into the Marvatines gym in Rockville, and everybody looked at me, and nobody would come anywhere near me and talk to me. And I was like, what do I smell, or do I look funny, or... so?" My job was to shadow the coaches and step in and help with what was going on in the training gym. And after two days of nobody talking to me, I was about ready to get on a plane and go home. And next thing I know, this little blonde towhead comes running up to me and goes, are you really Dukahanamoka? And then ran away. And I looked at my ex-teammate, roommate, and I said, what did you tell them? And sure enough, he had told them I was the famous Duke Kahanamoko surfer from Hawaii. <laughs> and there were two other Bobs training in the gym, Bob Schwartz and Bob Shaw. And they said, well, we can't have three Bobs. So Duke stuck. And from that point, when I finished up coaching in Marvatines, went to New York. I was still called Duke in New York, came back to the university to do grad work. I had a Marvatine gymnast on my team. She called me Duke. They all called me Duke, and it just stuck. And the rest oh. is history. And the rest is history. Okay, I think that'll do it, right? Absolutely. So I'd like to thank Duke for coming on the podcast. i also like to thank my co-host Sherry for setting this up. And I would like to thank you for tuning in to another podcast. So we'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to Pickleball Nation. This is Joan Morse reminding you that the audio for Pickleball Nation is available wherever you get your podcasts.